I don't. In this video, we're going to talk about candle snuffing. As you might know, candle snuffing is one of the four-ish um, skills drills that we have in Gumdo, right? So the others being throw cutting, uh, paper cutting, bamboo cutting, and arguably, arguably uh, board breaking, right? So we have that piece of board held up by a string, held up by two inverted jingum, which makes it sound a lot more intimidating than it really is. But, so we have all of those in addition to candle snuffing, and candle snuffing is usually the one that makes most people frustrated, <laughs> probably the most quickly, right? So let's talk about that. Of these skills drills, this one has like the most equipment, if you want to think of that. Um, uh, so what we use in the school, so there's no standardized way of doing this with the Federation, but what we use here is uh, literally a piece of wood, a nail uh, pulled through it, uh, usually put paper on top of that, and then we have our candle, relight candle, lighter, and a sword that you're willing to get wax on. Wax as well as potentially hitting um, the nail. So maybe not your favorite mukum, but having like all of those things. Uh, there's also going to be a little bit of etiquette um, that we can talk about when we're actually like setting things up and all that stuff. Um, but let's get started with, with all of that, right? So let's first get into the setting of candle snuffing. First things first is we need our sword. So when you're setting things up, right? So in general, you're going to kind of know where you're supposed to be. You kind of claim your territory, if you want to think of it that way, by putting your sword down where you're going to be. So let's first do that. So we're here. So make sure you kind of like find your, find your territory. You can come to a knee, put your sword down next to you. Uh, at this point, if you want to come to a kneel, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can also, again, kind of like think about where you're going to be setting things up. So by putting my um, sword down here, I kind of know this is where I'm, where I'm going to be facing. And everyone else can also know that because this is where the, the hilt's facing, right? So they know this is forward, the blade's in, so they know this area is located. So we have our location here. So now that I've kind of claimed my spot, uh, you can usually do that just by putting down your sword. Uh, let's set up our candles. So we're here, again, coming to your kneel. So again, every school does this a little bit differently. Uh, so you might notice, again, this is the board I'm using. So this is a old, um, uh, so uh, karate pine, which is what they're called, uh, when you used to do for board breaking for Taekwondo. Uh, this is what I'm gonna use. I literally have a nail pulled through it. And what I'm gonna do, this might look a little bit strange, but we, believe me. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put down some paper actually on top of it this way. Uh, so, this is not canonical, again, by the way, but again, the reason I'm doing this is so when we do affix our candles to the very bottom of this, uh, when the candle wax melts, it goes onto the paper, as opposed to on the board, which my student neglected to do. Uh, as you can probably tell, there was a little bit of stuff on there, uh, but this way it makes cleanup a lot easier, and also it kind of just keeps the floor neater. Uh, so let's go get our candles, and what I usually use is, again, just standard boring candle, a uh, rubber band around the base, and a mostly used candle as my relight, and a lighter. So I know that was a lot of stuff, but it's gonna make a lot more sense when we set things up. So we're here, right? So we have our handy lighter. So there's a few things I have in my hand. Uh, so this is a mostly used up candle, right? So when you have something like this and you burn down pretty much, uh, pretty far, uh, you can use this as a relight. You'll see what I mean by that. I usually put that in a slightly distant corner kind of know where it is, where the, where the edge of the actual board is, uh, so it doesn't happen to fall over and set fire to your dojang that you really want to not burn down. Uh, you're gonna notice I have a few others, right? So when you start off, obviously, highly recommend just start with one candle, and obviously move on to two bound together, and three is usually what you're expected to be able to do by the end of your color belt career, and obviously this increases to, again, four or maybe even five as you get further and further up. Um, for now, for purposes of demonstration and stuff like that, I kind of show you uh, some basic techniques. I'm going to stick with one, and I'll kind of show you what you can do with three, again, the orientations and stuff like that uh, in a little bit. Uh, so for now, I'm going to put those merrily to the side. Uh, and just in case you like to be completionist, kind of like know what, what my process is, usually if this, so this is unbound by a rubber band, I just have my thumb or finger over, and I kind of just keep Chris crossing the rubber band over, right? And then I use, I pinch, and I put this over to the side of the um, nail. 
No, I think some schools even like drive the nail through their candle. I find that destroys them. I find this is usually pretty nice and kind of gives you a nice gauge of when to stop because like you obviously don't want to keep it burning until it hits the rubber band because then it'll smell. Believe me, rubber bands do smell when you set fire to them. Uh, so from here, let's get started, right? Uh, so what we usually do is, uh, mostly because we don't want to use up too much weird fuel, right? So all we do, uh, so first what I like to do is kind of trim the wick a little bit, like if it's been burning for a while before, uh, just by pinching the very top of it. Uh, light your relight. Uh, so we use this fairly minimally just because, you know, it's butane, we don't really want to use too much of that. Um, we could light our candle without, with a little bit of difficulty because it's a short wick. I don't know why I shortened the wick on the relight. Uh, so then I'm just going to keep out the corner. So usually from here, right, so we've lit and everything. Now this is part of a test. Uh, the test uh, proctor is usually the, the one who lights it. From here, what we usually do is meditate, right? So from here, you can hold this position. You can go through the three cycles of breathing near the end. Uh, assuming that we've done that, uh, let's actually get started with a few techniques that we can do, uh, kind of get, your, get, get, get you started with your candle career. The first thing we'd like to start with, like if this is like your first time doing like any candles or anything like that, is using your finger to put it out. So for this one, let's get a little comfortable because I'm also not great at being in that position for very long. So assuming like this is like for white belts or anything like that, all you're gonna do is again, hold two fingers out, holding again, keeping the, the other two kind of uh, tucked in. All I wanna do is very, very light, very light, and then Right, so notice I didn't hit the candle. Uh, hitting the candle is kind of like a no-go. You don't want to hit the candle. That's going to kind of like nullify any effects that you have. What I want to do is just be very relaxed and then just boop, right overhead. Uh, so again, this, uh, I don't know if it looks like magic per se, uh, but this is something that once you get the feel for how to do it, uh, it's actually second nature after a while, right? Now, this obviously works for like one candle, two candles, three candles, uh, obviously like as far up as at least four, because that's as far as I went with it. Um, but again, just like have it lit. Uh, if you want to be a little more serious with this, right? So like if you're not a casual teacher like I am, uh, if you're here, again, be in your nice seated position, look at it and like, all right. So here, focus, focus, and then boop, it can go out. Um, now that looks pretty easy. Uh, and I'll do this a few other things with uh, a few other times with uh, higher level candles, but that's the idea for at least the first, so usually what I do with this is um, the first time you do candles, this is pretty much what we do. Uh, but then let's take a look at some uh, actual cutting with this. The technique is going to be the same. So this is, so assume this is sort of like your test or this is a more regimented way. Assume we just lit it, like all right, I've done my meditation, right? So from here, I would pick up my sword Partial draw, partial draw because sometimes like if you are using a longer, or not longer, a worn down mukam, you might have splinters, you might have the wax, you want to like grind your fingers through that. Uh, now obviously at this distance, we are very clearly too close, right? Uh, so this is really good for lighting and kind of getting all of that uh, used to it. So from here, we'll need to shuffle back a little bit. Um, actually what I'll do is I'll come over to this side so you can kind of see the distance, right? So if I didn't uh, slide back at all, right? So I'm kind of like up to here, right? If I drew and I was here, notice how far over my sword is compared to the candle. Ideally, you're about like the last like few inches of the sword, uh, or even like if you really need to, you could be a little bit further out even from there. Like this is like the hot spot, right? So if I'm very close this way, no good, right? So from here, again, more traditionalists would have it sheathed, maybe gently put it behind you a little bit more, um, <laughs> gently without like ruining your knees, uh, shuffle back a little bit from here, partial draw, and get that distance, right? Now, as you're doing this with um, testing, so again with federation, what you're gonna do is one, so, very f okay, so for the very first one, you get two meditative uh, strikes and then one final, and then one meditation, one full. So it looks something like this. So here, breathe in, kind of check your distance, check your distance, and then here, right? Uh, and then from there, 
So it would be here and then coming out. And when you're done, right, uh, you don't necessarily need to focus per se, but bring it back in. Again, partial draw and put away, put it down, reset, and then come in for uh, relighting the candle. Let's move on to two candles. Uh, so we can kind of show you more fail saves or kind of like knowing what to do when something happens. One quick note, uh, the way I like to orient uh, my two candles is actually have them side by side. Now you can obviously have it forward like this. This is really entirely up to you and your own experience. I just like it that way. Again, it doesn't really matter uh, so long as you take two out. Uh, but the process is exactly the same, right? So we have our candles, we go in, we use our relight candle get the little wax out, and obviously you need to get candle wax on your hand because that is how you learn as a person. Uh, but ideally don't do that, uh, and, or blow your candles with a undeserved laugh. Uh, but let's make sure that's not in the way, and make sure you get your candle, you know, finger in the candle wax. Uh, so once again, from here, breathe, again, let it kind of burn up a little bit. But the same process, right? So let's just assume, I'm trying to figure out how we can do this. Uh, so let's assume, uh, because what you need to do is be able to get both of these out uh, in one shot. So uh, again, if you notice that you're a little bit too close, again, you can shuffle back. Uh, I'm going to try to get just one out. I, tell, I mean, it's pretty obvious what you should do, but there we go. It's almost like I planned that. Uh, so notice uh, that it's out. So one of them's out. It did not count. So from here, if I need to lean back in, partial put away, right? Come back in and relight that candle. Uh, now that'll still count as an attempt, or if I hit it, even if they go out, if I hit it, it does not count, or it still counts as an attempt, but doesn't count towards putting it out. So from here, uh, but same thing, right? So assuming this is the first time you're here. So breathe, so one, two, and then three, and after that, one, two. Now you're all obviously allowed to get it on the first try, um, but I also wanna make sure we get nice repetitions. It's gonna be exactly the same with three, and you can also see you can still do that finger trick with two. Right, so let's take a look. So you can lean in a little bit. So one, two, pop. Right. Uh, and this is also going to be true for three, it's going to be true for four. You can do this with pretty much as many candles as you can, feasibly, <laughs> within reason. Uh, but you're going to see, again, this is the same thing with three candles. So something happened off camera that I should probably actually maybe show. Um, so one, so you might initially think that the, uh, the finger thing is just a gimmick, it's like, oh, that's cute, you know, whatever. Um, but in the case that you accidentally drop your relight candle, uh, it's very nice to to be able to know, like, oh, I dropped it, bang, like, we're out. As opposed to being like, like, blow on it, we might blow the fire, we might do all sorts of things. If you can do that on command, uh, you might be able to save not burning down your whole dojang. That would, really, that would be really nice. Uh, now notice, uh, I have my candles kind of facing this way, so the triangle is here. It's gonna be the exact same kind of thing. Right, so if we here, again, partial draw. Uh, I think I'm a little bit too close, so again, what I should do is put my Sort of way, shuffle back, and then redraw, right? So I'm a little bit too far away, but it's fine. So same thing. So breathe, breathe, and then here, and put away. Now obviously you can do this with four, five, etc. But that's a very general gist of how to do candles. Now let's assume that was my test. I got it out, I put my sword away, I'm here. When I'm told I can put things away, then I usually go in, take that guy out, and then uh, hold this position, kind of feel the blood leaving my legs. And from here, we're gonna go reverse order in terms of cleanup. So notice I came in last with the candle, so obviously I'm gonna to go top down. So let's get rid of the candles, and I'm gonna get rid of everything else. And this is the reason I like this particular setup, uh, setup for me, is all you do is wrap up the paper, and we're good. Now you might notice that I'm using all the half sheets, you might be kind of wondering why. Uh, so when we do paper cutting, we actually use all the full sheets and I usually iron them for paper cutting, which leaves all the half sheets. Uh, so with this, actually all you need to do is simply just kind of like crumple it in, get it nice and close, pull straight up, 
and most of, so that was from before, uh, but most of the mess is now in my hand, and it's a lot easier for me to clean up. It's a very small thing, honestly, uh, but something that helps me in keeping my school clean, so that's all. And of course, the board. And when you're done, you're going to pick up your sword. So notice all the etiquette that we've learned so far still comes into play, even with stuff like this. So that was a really brief overview of kind of like how to handle candles, right? So like the etiquette involved like putting things down, setting things up, and all of that. Um, I would like to do a video in the future about more techniques associated with like how to make it better, right? Again, this is something that a lot of people have struggled, like a lot of people struggle with, uh, myself included. Uh, so this is something that I want to make sure it's kind of clear like ways you can kind of Again, see progress uh, in general, right? So obviously start uh, bottom up, right? So if you aren't feeling confident with this, start, start with that, right? Go with one candle, two candles, three candles, uh, and then from there, uh, go on to four, right? Because four is usually associated with if you're going to much higher levels. Uh, three is usually like the standard. If you're going to like a new school or something like that, that's pretty much like what you can expect. Uh, but four, like four candles and above are going to be four higher levels of black belt. Um, but yeah, so that was a general overview. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, but I guess, as always, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training. I don't.